Greetings and welcome to Prayer for America and the Nations. I'm Walter Zagrevich with Global Vision Ministries. Today, I'm being joined by Reverend Albert Ramirez and by you who have tuned in from the nations of the world. Thank you for joining us on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Telegram, Rumble, and on our webpage. Please share this program so that others may be blessed, so that others may be encouraged, and so that the gospel of Jesus Christ may spread around the world. And we want to welcome all who are joining us from the nations of the world. Thank you for joining us as together we will pray for America, for the nations of the world, and for your needs. If you have needs that you would like us to pray for, feel free to write us or even put in the comments if you're watching, for example, on Facebook, and we will agree with you in prayer for God's intervention, for God's move in your life. Welcome, Brother Albert. Amen. Praise God. That's uh, important for us to get together now at this time to pray. This program is a very good um, time to get together uh, and pray, pray against things. We can pray and change things because we are created in God's image after his likeness. And when scripture tells us, like in Ephesians 5, 1, that we should be imitators of God. Well, God creates all things. Jesus himself got up and rebuked a storm in Mark chapter 4, the end of that chapter. And he <clears throat> and he chided the individuals, uh, the, the apostles that were with him, and said, oh, how is it? Why is it that you're so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? So it does take faith. And um, I don't know how people can bypass that scripture, you know, because they got a lot of people in the body of Christ that are, they hear that, they hear us talk about rebuking the storm, speaking to it and stuff like that, but they don't see that in the scripture. And it's usually obvious that they don't know the word of God because that's all in the word of God, what we pray, what we do here on this, on this program. So if you don't believe us, you know, don't be mad at us. Don't get mad at us. Don't blame us. We're just giving you what the word of God says. And we believe what God says. It's a really dangerous thing, thing not to believe what God says. Good example of that is Israel, when they didn't believe God, when he said, I give you that land, go and possess it. God said he already gave it to them. God, in God's eyes, it was already done. But yet they didn't believe it. And God tells us in Hebrews chapter 4, too, I think it is. He says that they had an evil heart <clears throat> of unbelief. So that's what we don't want the body of Christ to be in any kind of unbelief. We just want to believe together. It's the time to get together when things look bad. Uh, we can't just trust by what we see. We, we can believe what God says, which is more powerful. We can speak to the storm, uh, tornadoes, and all kinds of things. And we've seen God intervene inter supernaturally. You know, you have, I have experienced supernatural interventions of God against weather. You know, I have for sure. And uh, I mean, we need to just believe what God says we can do in Christ Jesus. Amen. And, you know, uh, that is so true. So many people uh, uh, read uh, uh, passages in the word of God. Well, that's a nice story. Well, it's not just a story. It's there for purpose and for lesson also, especially when uh, we're talking about storms. There are storms in life, and sometimes they are actually physical storms, as the one that is facing the state of uh, 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 the state of Florida right at this moment. Well, we can and do pray, um, and, and it's not just begging God to do something. We do ask God for certain things, but there are certain things that God has given us authority to do. For example, um, Jesus said, uh, uh, go in, in Mark chapter 16, go and preach the gospel. And he says, and these signs will follow those that believe. Well, do you believe? Do I believe? Well, if we believe in these signs, the signs uh, will accompany us. And he talked about uh, speaking in tongues. He talked about laying hands on the sick and they will recover. And he talked about casting out devils, casting out demons. And uh, uh, we see that Jesus did this in a very frequent basis in his ministry here on earth. Well, uh, 
you know, there is weather, you know, there are things that just happen, there are natural phenomena and, and so on. But we also know that the enemy, the devil's a prince of the power of the air. And so he can and does steer things up because he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Now, um, the problem, uh, Brother Albert, I think, is sometimes people question the goodness of God. And so if you allow that question in your mind, it thwarts your faith in God. It, thwart, it puts a doubt. It puts a question mark in your prayers because they say, well, maybe this is a judgment of God. Well, maybe this is this or this is that. Jesus very clearly said, the thief, referring to the devil, does not come except to kill, to steal, and destroy. So is this storm from God? No, it is not from God. And so, yeah. whoa, how can you say that? How do you know that? Well, I just gave you the scripture that Jesus gave us in John chapter 10, verse 10. And then as Brother Albert has referred to the story where Jesus was on the boat with the disciples and a huge storm came up. Well, what's interesting, Brother Albert, is where were they going and where did they end up after that storm? It was on the other side where the gatherings were, and there was a man who was not only not just possessed, but uh, the Bible says, or or I should say in the Bible, it is recorded that um, when Jesus asked uh, for their name or who they were, it, they said, we are a legion. Well, uh, obviously, if it was referring to something like the Roman Legion, that'd be about 6,000 people in the Roman Legion. That's a lot of demons. Well, this was a very powerful uh, demoniac, we could say, in recorded in the New Testament, where he just, uh, nobody could hold him down. Well, I've seen uh, demonic manifestations, not perhaps to that extent, but some very violent manifestations. But what we see is that the devil was trying to stop Jesus from that mission. Because later on, you know, at first it says that the people were in fear and asked Jesus to leave from there. But later we read that all those regions were evangelized and there were many people. So who evangelized him? It must have been that man. It was that who man. Was, who was possessed and now was free and was telling everybody of what Jesus did for him. Well, the thing is that storms will come. And let me tell you, yesterday, <laughs> well, last few days have been that way. Yesterday in particular, just to get on this program was a storm power outage. Then our battery backup kicks in. But the one outlet that has the internet, it does not work after the backup comes on. And just as I rig all kinds of stuff up, suddenly power comes on, but still that outlet that we needed. So no internet. How do we get on? And, uh, and, and all sorts of things. But that's relatively minor to what people are facing right now in Florida and uh, people in other areas that are dealing with the aftermath of the prior uh, hurricane. And we want to not just pray, we need to take authority over the principalities, the rulers of the darkness of this age that have an influence that push these things. And now I know that we don't pray against every storm and every rain that comes, but I can tell you there are situations where you need to do that. And I'll say more about that a little bit later, Brother Albert. Absolutely. I mean, <clears throat> when you have catastrophic storms or earthquakes or things that kill and they destroy buildings, they destroy houses, they destroy lives, that's the devil I'm behind that. You know, and people don't realize who was trying to kill Jesus on that boat with the disciples? You know, they were bringing the, the gospel, a new word from God that where, whereas there was salvation, not only salvation, but there was um, eternal life being given to men inside them. And they make, make, and, and when Christ came, he came to give us that eternal life, but 
and what that eternal life involves with having dominion, having authority over all the power of the devil, Luke 10, 19, you know, and, and it involved all that. And that's, of course, what the devil did not want because he has been reigning before that all the way up to the point when Christ came. But now it says, in, <clears throat> I think it's what of Romans 5, 7, that we should be reigning or ruling in this life through Christ Jesus. And that's what the devil doesn't want. See, and I, I don't know if people think that way in this, in, you know, Christians, I'm talking about Christians, you know, and, and, and what the devil's, one of his strategy is, and I can see it, is that he's causing the, the Bible, the, the, the Bible believing Christians to limit God in their understanding. You know, if they don't understand that they have authority over all the power of the devil and nothing shall by any means hurt them, if they don't believe that scripture, I don't know how they can't. You know, Jesus wasn't just talking to his disciples. He's that word reference references all of us as believers, you know, and like you mentioned, Mark 16, 17, you know, these signs will follow those who believe. He didn't say my disciples only. He said those who believe. He says in my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. They shall speak in new tongues, you know, and if they eat any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. There's a reason why God says things in the Bible and everything is is pinpoint accurate in what God says. God's word has been tested and tried, and it's always been proven. It's what it's what, what God says is going to take place. And the thing is, the problem is we have God has made us in his image and his likeness, and there's a, still a devil here. There's an appointed time that God has ordained for him to be judged. But in the meantime, he's still here wreaking havoc, and he wreaks havoc more on those who don't believe in the authority and dominion that Christ has restored to man, that God gave to man, Adam and Eve, man, uh, in the beginning, that Satan, you know, deceived them and stole that from them. So this, this, this was part of the problem is, I, like I said, with the body of Christ, and we ha we still have a lot of killing, stealing, and destroying. What the devil does is because a lack of knowledge, and God tells us that in Hosea four six, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. And like I said, so, um, uh, Psalm 78, 41, it says they limited the Holy One of Israel. The Israelites, they limited the Holy One of Israel because of their understanding. They didn't think God could able to, would be able to deliver those nations into their hands, that they would be able to overcome the giants that were in that land. <clears throat> they thought they looked like grasshoppers in their sight. So they limited God by their understanding. And that's what's happening in the body of Christ today. They they're limiting the power, the authority of God that's already in the, I'm talking to believers, that's in the believer. You know, and they think, oh, that guy, Albert, he's just a nutcase. He's one of those conspiracy theorists. He's one of those misinformation guys. No, the information I get is from the word of God and also through experiences that I've had acting on that word, speaking that word and demonstrating. Uh, that's, what it, that's what Jesus said we receive the power of the Holy Spirit for. In, in Acts 1 8, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you to be witnesses unto me. <clears throat> That's the reason we receive that power. Now, if you don't believe that, it's not it's not going to work for you. If you're a Christian, you have Christ in you, and you believe that, yeah, you're born again. But if you don't believe the rest of the word of God, then you're going to suffer unnecessarily. That's right. And uh, I, I go <laughs> back to this. If um, do we really believe that God is a good God? Do we really believe what Jesus said that He has come to give us life and life more abundantly? And he drew a very clear contrast. He told us that the thief, the devil, comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. What do these storms do? They kill, they steal, and they destroy. So do not question that. If you do, then it's hard for you to pray. So some of you are, are there, well, you know, that God sent this, and, and, then, and then, then you're trying to pray for God to take it away. So you have to establish God is a good God. Every good and perfect gift comes from him, from the Father of lights, in whom Amen. there is not a shadow, not even a shadow of turning, not a shadow of deviation. And that's 
the tactic the devil uses to put a question mark in your mind, in my mind, about the goodness of God. That's what he did with Eve in the garden. Well, you know, that God say that, well, you know, God's trying to withhold something better from you, putting a doubt, putting a question in the goodness of God. Do not allow that question to ever enter your Amen. spirit because it'll ruin your way of praying and looking at God. And if you question in the most basic form the goodness of God, then how can you with faith move forward asking him to do things expecting to receive an answer? God is a good God, and that sickness in your body is not from God. Jesus came to give life. He came to heal. In fact, the Bible says he healed all that were brought to him. The only time someone asked Jesus a question, if it was his will to heal, well, it was the person who had leprosy, and lepers were not allowed to come close to congregations, to groups of people. They had to scream, I'm unclean, otherwise they would get stoned. And so this man could not attend the meetings where Jesus was teaching and healing. So when he came to Jesus, he said, if it be your will, heal me. And what did Jesus say to him? Mm, I'll think about it, maybe. <laughs> no, Jesus said, I will, I will. Uh, you remember a uh, blind Bartimaeus, you know, he was crying out to Jesus. Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? He had to answer specifically, he says, that I might receive my sight. But we see that Jesus always responded to healing of people. And so don't, do not, please do not allow doubt to enter your mind, because if you allow that doubt, then you will have a difficult time in dealing with the rest of prayer and, and how to approach situations like this. Isn't that so, Brother Albert? Amen. You know, and then, and then uh, like I said, sometimes, <clears throat> it, well, the majority of the time what, what's happening to people is they're limiting God. And, you know, and you know, and, and 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 I can just hear the devil speaking to people's minds. He's not going to come and say, "Hello, Albert," or "Hello, Walter." This is the devil speaking. You're not going to believe that or listen to that if that were the case. He's just going to put a thought that will in your mind that will limit. And like I said, I'm talking to believers because it's the believers. We are the ones that have authority and dominion that Christ has returned to us that the devil stole from Adam and Eve. Now, if if we don't believe that and we don't act upon that, of course. We're going to be limited. Not only are we going to limit, uh, be limited in what we can do in Christ because of a lack of knowledge, a lack of knowing, knowing and believing what God says in his word we can do. In fact, you got uh, John 14, 12, where Jesus says, the things that I do, shall you do. The things that I do, shall you do. Uh, you know, and greater things. Now, I don't know why people can't believe that. You know, at least we should try to strive to do that, to strive to get to that point, to do the things that Christ did and to do greater things. <clears throat> if he said it, you know, that we that we can do that, uh, you know, and, and, and when he was saying that in the 14th chapter of, of John, most of that whole chapter, he's talking because he was going to send the Holy Spirit and because we're going to we were going to be empowered by that same Holy Spirit is why we could do the same things he did and greater things. Now, if we, if what happens with people is, is because they don't instantaneously see things, because they don't, um, things that, you know, like, like we speak against the storm. We, I've been speaking against the storm, commanding it just like Jesus did in Mark chapter four. I think it's verse 40. Just like he did to that storm, commanding the winds to, to dissipate, to see them to speak peace to those winds, to the waves in the name of Jesus. And I believe what I'm saying, but it's more, it's more powerful when we, when you get more of the body of Christ, all of us together are members of the body of Christ. And it's like, 
it's like I'm a little pinky or something and and I'm trying to do this with, with my little pinky whereas if the whole body got together and and corporately said the same thing then something's going to something's going to have an, an impact on that thing there's going to be a greater impact you can tell people to do that you know I put out a prayer over the internet and sent to different Christian groups but I know, I know by the by the Spirit of God that a lot of the Christians say that guy's kind of goofy, he's nutty, you know, speaking to the storm. I know that what are they, what, what, how is it that like Jesus told us to stop? How is it that you don't have faith to do that? Faith comes, faith comes, comes, faith to do that comes from studying the Word of God, meditating, believing the Word of God first and foremost, believing that Word of God, and then acting upon it. Faith without works is dead. So if you don't act upon, if you don't, first of all, if you don't believe it, you're in unbelief. You don't believe what God says, you know, and then, and then if you don't act upon it, you know, nothing's going to get done. Nothing's going to happen, you know, or, and if you're, you're limiting God, you're, you're, you're limiting God working through you, which is what God wants. So he gave this earth that says in Psalm 115 to man, he gave the earth to man and the heavens belong to God. And we're supposed to subdue it like it says in the in the genesis 1 28 subdue subdue it um, uh, psalm 8 says that he gave us dominion over all the works of his hands that, that everything everything this plan and like i said the devil's still trying to kill still and destroy he's still trying to <coughs> rest that dominion and that authority back from mankind like you did adam and eve so we have to believe what god says that's then right be doers of the word and we'll see results amen and uh again uh for example you know we we do need rain um and, and rain is a blessing of god uh it waters the earth uh, gives us uh, drinking water eventually and also it waters our trees and plants and cleans the atmosphere there's so much blessing from having uh rain uh, especially in areas like california where we live where rain is a precious, precious thing because there's so little of it. But um, on occasion, uh, some years back, I was uh, with uh, T evangelist Tony Abram and his wife. We were conducting crusades in Brazil. And we were in the city of Porto Alegre, a fairly large city in the southern part of the country. In the city of Porto Alegre, we were having a meeting and we were get, having, I would say, about 30, 35,000 people coming each night. This crusade was going, I believe, for 10 nights, uh, two weekends and the week in between. And um, we were, um, this day during the week, um, as we gathered there, there were maybe only about 12,000 because it had rained all day. It was kind of gloomy. And we were, these meetings are not in a building. They're outside on a soccer field, and we had a rustic platform with some string lights and obviously a sound system. And um, we had quite a few pastors on the platform there, but one of them was leading in singing um, at that moment as we began the meeting. And um, it started to drizzle and uh, uh, I mean, when it started to drizzle, it could, you knew that the next moment or two, there was going to be a big downpour. So some people began to uh, flee looking for cover or tree or something. Some had an umbrella and pulled it up. Um, but I felt that it, I needed to step up to that microphone and take control of the situation and command the rain to stop. Now, that's a little bold um, in a situation like this. And so I just asked everybody to stop where they were in their tracks, walking wherever they were, and they did. And I said, look, you've seen the miracle working power of God here on a day after day. You've seen the blind receive their sight, the, the deaf hearing. You see the paralytics walking. How many of you believe that we can pray and command the rain to stop and it will stop? And of course, um, 
young believers, new believers, a lot of them were just raising their hands, amen. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, I had a lot of pastors and some of them fairly sizable churches behind me. I did not look back, but I could just feel a little tension, you know, a little bit of <laughs> nervousness there. And um, so I said, okay, we prayed now. I said, um, you know, take down those umbrellas. It was still drizzling. Um, and uh, I took off my raincoat and, uh, you know, the platform was not covered, just out in the open air. And, um, and, and the rain stopped and, it, and, and the rain did not come down until we dismissed the people they went home and then the rain began to come down. Now, again, I want to preface that we need rain, but there are situations like this where I knew God's will was not for these people to run away, but God's will was for them to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, to be saved, to be healed. And so I had no doubt whatsoever in that moment that this is what needed to be done. And again, I don't go around doing this uh, everywhere, but I've had to do it a couple of times in Brazil. And uh, no, I'm not Elijah, please uh, don't uh, start labeling me in some way or pretending to be one. I was just simply exercising that authority that Jesus gave us. And so what happened that night? Out of those 12,000 people, about 6,000 people indicated, uh, I, I would say about 6,000 of those people raised their hands for salvation that night. Um, and I would say that we had about, uh, I'm trying to remember if it was about 1,200 or 2,000, I think it was about 1,200 testimonies of healing. We heard about 200 of them, and it just the night was just drawing on, and so we just didn't hear the rest of them. But people were coming up and testifying of miracles, healings That's in fun. their lives. So let's look back. Let's analyze the situation. What was what God's will in this situation? Was God's will for them not to hear the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the salvation, healing, deliverance, and just run off? home soaking wet, or was it for them to be there and hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and be saved? Well, I think the answer is quite obvious. And, uh, and, and so I'm just telling you that we have authority in the name of Jesus Christ over the elements. We don't just go frivolously doing this, but there are moments when we do take action like this. And so I want us, Brother Albert, I, I don't know if you want to share anything more, but I want us to take authority. We've done it with Sister Marcy yesterday on the program over this Milton. Hurricane Milton is what they've called it. As you know, the Bible says that God has exalted the name of Jesus above every name. So the name of Jesus is higher than the name of Milton the Hurricane. And so in that powerful and mighty name of Jesus, we are to take authority and command this hurricane. What do we do? We could command it to stop. We could command it to slow down, to just be, just dissipate and become a, a just, just a normal storm, if we could put it that way, rainstorm without the high winds and flooding, um, Brother Albert. Hey Amen. I mean, you know, uh, I, I, let me let me share some scripture real quick. It's in um, it's in Romans chapter fifteen, and it says this. This is Paul speaking by Holy Spirit. He said, "For I will not dare to speak of any of these things which Christ has not worked or wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed." This and then verse nineteen says, "The this this caused the the the, the Gentiles to to be obedient." And by word and deed, it says through mighty signs and wonders. When God does mighty signs and wonders, you know, people start believing. People start acting upon like they saw that God stopped that storm while you were there preaching. It says by the power of the Spirit of God. That's by the that's the power we have to do so. 
It says, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Now, there's a lot. You can partially preach the gospel of our salvation and then, and then just always be on that subject of just salvation, which that is part of the gospel. Absolutely. But then the other part is the authority of the believer, the, the, the dominion that we have in Christ Jesus over all the works of God's hands. In Psalms, you know, eight, like, for example, it says, and also in Genesis 126 and Genesis 128, you know, and, and, and over all the earth, it says in Genesis 126, I think it is, where God says that he let them have dominion over all the birds, the bees and everything. You know, and then he says, and over all the earth. So if God has given us dominion over that, and then, of course, the devil's still here, and he can cause havoc, and he can cause, he can come and steal your peace, your joy, your, your, your prosperity, your blessing from God, and he can destroy your house, your family, all of those things, uh, kill, steal, and destroy all those things. So, uh, you know, we have the power of God. We can limit that power by only partially preaching the gospel and other words, just preaching about salvation only and never tell anybody about the dominion they have the authority they have in christ over all the power of the devil luke 10 19 uh if you never preach that people are not going to believe it because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god so it's partially the gospel is partially being preached throughout the body of christ and there's there's different parts that people are preaching it depends on what they believe of the gospel i fully believe like Paul, I fully preached the gospel. So obviously he fully believed everything in the word of God or that he heard from the mouth of God or the Holy Spirit that instructed him. He fully believed it and he acted upon it. And he, and he said, what happened when he acted upon it? Through signs and wonders, he said there in the scripture we just read. So <clears throat> if we don't believe what God has given us, if we don't act upon it, it's, God, God's already given us all things that, you know, you want to know about that? Uh, uh, through uh, uh, Second Peter chapter one, I think it's verse four. He's God has given us all things through uh, um, that pertain to life, this life that we're living on this earth, and godliness, spiritual things. That means spiritual things. God is always already. He's past tense. He's speaking to us in those verses. In, in Second Peter chapter one, He says, he's "Given us all things that pertain to life and godliness." You know, and it comes through the knowledge of God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. So if we don't act on, on the, the whole gospel as a whole, we don't act upon it, we can take advantage of everything God has already provided. You know, and God's it's already there. It's almost it's almost like being in a warehouse where God has fully provided us, and we have the key to get in there anytime we have needs. But if we don't, if we don't, you know, take that key, and the key is, Jesus says in Matthew 16, 19, I'll give you the keys to the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. If we don't take those keys and open up that door and, and take what, what and exercise or use what God has freely given us and provided for us, then it's not going to work for you. You're not, you're not taking the keys. You're not using the keys to have access or gain access to what God has already given you. And it's, that's very simple. I don't know why people can't understand that. And it, it, it's very simple, but if it's, it's the, the point is the responsibility is on every one of us as believers to believe that what God says in his word and then to act upon it. If we don't act upon it, it's not going to work. You know, <laughs> uh, I want to uh, pray right now. And I just want to read the passage that we were referring to from Mark chapter 4. And that way, we I want you to know or have the biblical basis for this. I want you to see what Jesus, our Savior, did in confronting that particular storm. So it says, uh, starting in verse... Uh, in verse 36, uh, um, it says, Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose. Isn't that what we're looking at? Well, I don't think it was as big as this uh, Milton, but nonetheless, for them in the little boat, that was a huge storm. It says it was a great windstorm. I believe it. So it's a it great windy on that sea. I've been there. <laughs> okay. Real windy. 
Okay. And the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Now, can you imagine? How can you sleep when there is a storm? Only when you know that everything's okay, everything's under control, God's God got you, and you are in his hands. So they said, Teacher, do you not care? Obviously, he cared. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. So let's read that again. And he, verse 39, Mark chapter 4, it says, then he, that's Jesus, arose and rebuked the wind and said, he spoke to the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And what did he say to the disciples? He said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? So this is where we are right now. We're going to pray against this wind. Jesus rebuked the wind and he spoke calm to the sea. And that we can do. Jesus did it. He said, the works that I do shall you do, and greater than these shall you do. So based on scripture, why can we not do this? Of course we can do this. In fact, he rebuked the disciples for their lack of faith, for not having done this already. Amen. So brother Albert, would you do that right now? Let's pray and let's take authority over this Hurricane Milton and of course, we want to pray for the people that have are digging out from uh, the uh, aftermath of Helene. And also, we want to lift up those. You know, um, I just jotted down a couple of things. You know, we're talking about uh, Milton, but there are uh, tornadoes that have hit in parts of Kentucky. In fact, I saw a video clip of a woman praying and even praying in tongues and. And this tornado did not touch her home when it touched everything else around her. So another example of, of, of prayer in a storm. But uh, there is a huge uh, fire in Wyoming, 74,000 acres, my understanding is. <coughs> but we want to pray right now for, particularly for um, Florida and against this Hurricane Milton Okay, Brother Albert. Amen. Well, Father, we just thank you for the privilege of being able to house our physical bodies, our bodies being the temple of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. Lord, forgive us for grieving him, quenching him, uh, limiting him, and also uh, uh, resisting him like the Pharisees and the religious people did. So, Father, we ask you to forgive us for doing that with the Holy Spirit within us. We thank you that he is the power of God, unto us, that he gives us uh, salvation, deliverance from all things. He is our instructor. He's the power that manifests signs and wonders through Christ Jesus, who lives in us. So, Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Lord, now we just lift up that, we speak to that storm. According to Mark eleven twenty three. 23, we speak to that storm, command it to peace, be still. The winds, we command those winds to be still in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we take authority over that, the waves and the, the water in Jesus' name, to be calm in Jesus' name. Be still in the name of Jesus. We speak to it right now. And Lord, we stand in agreement with those believers that are watching that do believe the same way. Father, we believe and agree and decree it, declare it. And those tornadoes, those winds that are causing the tornado or demonic spirits that might be behind these, Tornadoes, in the name of Jesus, we take authority over them. We rebuke you and command you to get out of the way. Stop causing those storms in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that we command that ground, those storms, to be still in the name of Jesus. We speak to those tornadoes. We command them to dissipate. And that's that Milton the hurricane to dissipate out there in the Gulf. In the name of Jesus, be still. Be still. 
in Jesus' name. And all these these storms, these these this rain fall after the aftermath in Jesus' name of of Helene and also of of uh, Milton in the name of Jesus. All that rain to stop, Lord, in Jesus' name. If Isaiah, <clears throat> if Elijah can could could stop the rain, and it says it says in the scriptures in in James. If Elijah, a man who was like passions as we have, in other words, with the same mistakes, the same kind of people we are, if he could by faith command the rain not to, 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 to stop over Israel for three years, we can command that rain in Jesus' name to stop more so than Elijah because we have God's nature, God's eternal life within us. So we speak to that storm to be still, and Lord, if the government's manipulating, and I, I have tend to believe that they are, they've been studying this. I've been researching this for 40 years. You know, I haven't researched for 40 years, but probably about 25 to 30. But they've been doing this for more than 40 years, trying to look, trying to, how to control that. We just loosen angels to go destroy their equipment in the name of Jesus. It's just nothing for but to kill, steal, and destroy. It's a strategy of the devil. We loosen angels to destroy their equipment that harp equipment in the name of Jesus. Let an earthquake swallow it up. Let a tornado destroy it in the name of Jesus. But that harp, that government uh, 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 technology trying to control the weather in the name of Jesus, not only in America, but in China, Russia, Europe, around the world, any government trying to control the weather, we just loosen angels to destroy their equipment and to swallow it up, to destroy with a tornado or an earthquake in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, we just agree on that. We thank you, Lord, because your angels, have, according to Hebrews chapter one, have been sent to minister for us. So Lord, we thank you for those angels. We thank you, Lord, that you're, a, we pray for the people in those areas, that water to, 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 to uh, you know, Lord, you, you there's a, uh, in second Kings, Lord, I think it's chapter three, you, 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 you cause water to flood an area. And then you also cause that water to dissipate. So Lord, you can dissipate that water in those areas in the Carolinas, Lord, Kentucky, Lord, <clears throat> in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, uh, we just, in Tennessee, Lord, in Jesus' name, we speak to that, Lord. We pray for the people there. Pray that you meet all their needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Make the government, Lord, to do their job, which they've not been doing in Jesus' name. Do their job to help those people and come in and, and remove all the debris also in Florida and all these other states in Jesus' name. Lord, you are our help, and we cry out to you to help, but we also take authority in Jesus' name over the works of your hand, according to, to, to Psalm 8, 6. You gave us authority, dominion over the works of your hands. Therefore, we speak against that storm and any other storms in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord. For the authority, we thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit confirming your word, <clears throat> confirming this prayer by faith in Jesus' name, that, Lord, you are delivering your people, and, Lord, you have answered our prayers and delivered us from all our fears or destruction in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Lord, we lift up those that are digging out. Uh, give yes. them the supplies. The yes that they need. We pray that that aid that is so urgently needed, especially in the mountains of the Carolinas and uh, the Eastern Tennessee. Father, we pray that those so that aid would reach them safely and quickly. And we pray for those that are providing that aid, those that are carrying that aid, give them safe passage, give them favor. This, uh, Lord, we know that there are many volunteers, maybe many private volunteers, individuals that are working very hard. Lord, those that are missing, we pray that they would be discovered, that they would be found, that they would be revealed uh, quickly. And those especially that are alive, that they yes, would Lord. be found <clears throat> and uh, brought to, to a safer place right now in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Father, we lift up the nation of Israel in this hour. Yes. And Lord, um, to just celebrate it, not celebrate it, but just <laughs> one year anniversary, a very horrific event. Father, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Yes. We pray for the salvation of your people. We pray, oh God, for an end to those conflicts on their in very the borders. And Father, we pray 
for your protection on your people. Yes, no Lord, weapon formed against them shall prosper. Amen. And Lord, we pray for the salvation of your people as well as those in the nations that surround yes, them. Yes, Lord. Lord Albert, Jesus. would you continue praying and pray for uh, Ukraine uh, as well? Yes, Lord. We just take authority over these principalities, these powers, that spirit of Antichrist, Lord, that spirit of lawlessness that's still uh, causing these wars that are manipulating men. In the name of Jesus, we bind you in the name of Jesus. And we command you to cease and desist from causing these wars, from, from uh, um, propagating these wars, from increasing these wars in Jesus' name. In the Middle East, we still come against it in the name of Jesus. Lord, we have authority to do so. It's not flesh and blood we're dealing with. Ephesians 6 says, but these principalities, these powers, these rulers of darkness, these ones like Daniel in the book of Daniel, and that 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 were the prince of Persia, in the name of Jesus, we come against you. <clears throat> it's the same prince that was in Daniel's day, causing these wars, causing this hatred. In the name of Jesus, we bind that power, the principality, that ruler of darkness, and cast you out of there in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we bind every spirit of hatred between the, the, the Hamas for the Jews, you know, and vice versa, and also uh, the Hezbollah in the name of Jesus. Disband them, bind that hate in Jesus' name. And Lord, we take authority over the lies in our country, in Europe, and around the world, in every country, the lies, that spirit, that principality, that lying spirit causing lies through media, through government officials, lying, in the, in the name of Jesus, the devil is the father of those lies. And we take authority binding that devil and binding those principalities, powers, lying to their to their their constituents, their government, their people in every nation that we lift up right now, in every nation that's being represented <laughs> that's watching here today in Jesus' name. We bind those principalities, powers, that spirit of lawlessness and deception. In the name of Jesus, that spirit of Antichrist coming against the Christians in in Nepal, in India, in China, and all these different countries where these false religious demons that are caught manipulating people's minds, we command you to cease and desist. Those we bind those false religious principalities and powers, causing hatred and strife and division worldwide in every country through different religions in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we loosen your peace in the name of Jesus through angelic support, Lord, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And Father, we believe this and we give you praise and thanks for doing it. And those lies through the media, Lord, calling uh, everything misinformation, those lies through government officials, calling everything misinformation, that's a lie of the devil. And we bind that devil, command that devil to shut up in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just loosen truth, we loosen faith, we loosen love upon all that are watching every nation that we've lifted up here in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we just loosen your truth. Let your truth, Father, uh, manifest your truth in every nation in Jesus' name. And we just thank you for revival. We ask and pray for it in every country, in America, in uh, throughout the Middle East and between Russia and Ukraine, Europe. Lord, um, Canada, Australia, all the nations of the world, Africa, India, Lord, in Jesus' name, China, we ask for revival, oh God. Use the youth, Lord. You said the youth would rise up. Well, they are rising up worldwide. Even in, even in Iran, the youth are rising up. <clears throat> and let them take authority. Let them use their dominion and authority and tear down, bind, and cast out those principalities causing these wars and this hatred between nations in the name of Jesus. We lose some faith, love, and hope around the world in every nation in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father, for doing it. We believe all things are possible with you, Father. We believe even these this voice in the wilderness, that, if you will, that we are like a voice in the wilderness, but nonetheless, we're still a voice. And that voice had an impact, you know, around the world through John the Baptist and even these small voice our, our voices speaking your word, praying your word, have an impact around the world. And we will see and hear of the good reports. We will see and hear 
of the things in the in the spiritual realm, the warfare in the spiritual realm that's taking place. And of course, God's things, spiritual things, will overcome everything evil in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And uh, Brother Albert, we're getting ready to head to Armenia. God is moving in a powerful way. And some people may have tuned in expecting us to have Pastor Khan in, on here uh, <laughs> because he just returned from a, a ministry tour throughout Europe. He had three services today and asked me, please, if we could postpone it. So, <laughs> so we will interview Pastor Khan while we are in Armenia and post it on here. Uh, but I do want you to pray for us, pray for our upcoming ministry trip. We are going to have an extremely busy, busy ministry uh, uh, time there. And um, they've got ministry lined up every day. We've got a conference or two. We've got, there are, they're ministry in different places. And we are looking forward to seeing a mighty, mighty move of God. Amen. I know that uh, God is going to do great things, and obviously opposition from the enemy as usual. Uh, but we know that that is just a confirmation of what God is getting ready to do. So I want you to pray for us, pray for the nation of Armenia. Some of you do not know a lot about this. It's not a very large nation, but a very strategic nation, a Christian nation surrounded by Muslim neighbors primarily, and um, a nation that uh, is uh, where revival is taking place. And they too have experienced war. And uh, not that long ago, uh, they've had uh, war there with uh, Azerbaijan over the enclave of Nagorno-Karabakh. And uh, uh, there are many refugees in parts of um, Yerevan and other places in Armenia. But uh, God is moving in the midst of that situation. And many, many people are streaming to Jesus Christ. And we are excited about what we're going to experience and see there in that nation of Armenia. So we ask for your prayers and uh, God moves on your heart and you want to sow in this ministry. Uh, we're not uh, uh, just ministering when we are in a nation. We continue to work on a uh, in different parts of the world, places like Brother Albert mentioned, Nepal, North India. We're also working in Cuba, in Spain, in Portugal, in Ukraine, a lot of work in Ukraine. And uh, we need your prayers. So um, I want to thank you in advance for your prayers. And if God steers your heart and you want to sow into this ministry or through this ministry into the mission fields around the world, our humanitarian relief efforts in Ukraine are in need of additional support and uh, as well as other areas of the world. But uh, Brother Albert, would you pray for us? Nina and I are leaving just in a matter of days. Uh, Brother Tony Abram will continue uh, hosting these programs and uh, we'll try to do what we can from Armenia, but we will, um, it's an 11 hour time zone difference for us. And uh, we will be having meetings there all over the the country and we uh it'll be difficult for us to be on exactly at this time on this program but we will try to record some things and post them on here as we uh, move along there we're um, from armenia we're heading to another neighboring country don't want to say too much about that but your prayers would be greatly appreciated and brother albert i ask that you pray for us and this upcoming ministry there amen Amen. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We just lift up together all of those that are watching with us here today. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we just come together in agreement. Your word says, if two agree is touching anything they shall ask, it shall be done by you, our Father, which is in heaven. So, Father, we ask in that name that's above every name, Jesus, that, Lord, that you, that your gospel, that they take the full gospel and preach that gospel over there in Armenia. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you go with them. And Lord, it's as, as we preach truth, as you, according to Mark uh, uh, 16, 20, I think it is, 
Lord, it says, and as they went and preached the, the word, you went and confirmed their word with signs and wonders following. Father, I pray that for Walter and Nina as they go to Armenia in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that many souls will get saved. We ask for souls to get saved, people to get born again, their spirits to get born again. Let's put that. Souls need to get saved too, which means the renewing of their mind, but also the, that they get born again, that they receive Christ. I pray, Lord, that you that your angels encamp around them, you know, according to your word, to keep them from all evil, to keep, take charge over their lives. And, and, and as they fly there and they fly between nations and, 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 and layovers in Jesus' name, that you protect them, that you watch over their luggage, Lord, in Jesus' name. These things are important. So, Lord, I just thank you that you watch over and protect them, keep them from all evil, every evil person, and every strategy of the devil that would try to interfere or hinder their trip. In the name of Jesus, we bind that devil ahead of time. We speak against it. That means angels even now are going for to destroy every strategy of the devil in Jesus' name against Walter and Nina's traveling uh, uh, itinerary in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, we just speak your peace upon them your health upon them in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you are protecting them. Thank you that you are filling them with more revelation, knowledge, and understanding to give to your people, to fully preach the gospel. And Lord, we thank you for doing it. We all agree as touching this done and give you all the praise. Thank you, Lord, for also meeting their needs, their financial needs for these trips. It's not free. None of this is free. So Lord, and we thank you for meeting and putting upon the hearts of your people to, to, to support them or even unbelievers to support them in the name of Jesus. And we just expect and believe to hear good reports from this trip. Uh, also, Lord, and, and from your answer of these prayers that we pray, because we're praying according to your word, Father. And we thank you that you honor and watch over your word to performance in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Brother Albert. And uh, thank you all <laughs> who have prayed and are praying for us. I want to uh, ask you also, Brother Albert, to pray for people who need healing. There are people who tune into this program, are tuned in right now, and will be tuning in that need healing, that need a breakthrough. Sarah, who needs wisdom in her housing situation, has a cousin, family member who needs uh a touch of God. My sister Vera needs a miracle of God and others who need a miracle of God right now and healing. Um, would you pray as the Holy Spirit leads you? There are people Amen. battling various types of things, cancers, uh, uh, COVID uh, and arthritis, other types of uh, situations. Would you pray as the Holy Spirit leads you, Brother Albert? Amen. Father, we thank you for your word, Lord. We stand on your word that in Psalm 107, verse 20, you said, you, Father God, our Father, and the Father of everyone out there that's sick, you sent forth your word. That word was Jesus. And, and it says in Matthew 16, 18, and, and 19, he says, you took all their infirmities. Past tense, you already did it. Through Christ, he nailed these sicknesses, diseases, cancers. Who he, Psalm 103, verse 4, he, who heals all our diseases who forgives all our iniquities. Lord, you, that you sent forth your word, that word is Jesus, and healed them, past tense, and delivered us from all our destructions. Well, Father, we speak that word. We sent forth that word in the name of Jesus to heal those that are watching from cancer, from tumors, that we could speak to those tumors to dissipate, to dissolve and disappear in the name of Jesus. <laughs> we speak to cancers, to to be removed from the bodies and every spirit of affliction is bound to cast off the bodies of those watching. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, we speak to any COVID and viruses in, in any of us that's trying to, to kill, steal, or destroy. We bind that devil in Jesus' name. We curse any virus, any, any uh, plague, that shall not come near our dwelling. Your word says, Father, we stand on that word. We decree that over everyone watching, over their family members, their loved ones. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. Those that need guidance, Father, we pray. Thank you for the Holy Spirit's guidance, his leading, his instruction. Father God, that the Holy Spirit is leading those who need help finding a house, 
And those who need financial help, the Holy Spirit can provide that too. That's your promise, Lord, to meet every need according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Not just fine, not just health and 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 but also financial blessing. Nor you can provide it all by the power of the Holy Spirit. We just pray this, decree it, and declare, Lord, that every need is being met financially. Every spiritual need, every emotional need is being met. I speak peace unto those that are being tormented. I bind those devils that are tormenting you. Cast them out in the name of Jesus. And that spirit of fear, especially in the body of Christ. That spirit of fear in the name of Jesus that's tormenting many. I bind you and cast you out of them. I lose some faith, boldness, courage, and grace by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, that they are speaking words of life, words of life. Even as the angel told Peter in the fifth chapter of Acts, go and stand in the temple and speak the words of this life. And these words that I'm speaking are words of your life, which is your word, your promises that are yes and amen. So we decree and declare it. People are healed. Tumors are gone. Tumors are disappeared. Cancers are gone in the name of Jesus. Blind are seeing and deaf are hearing. Lord, uh, uh, skin diseases. And that's very, I feel the Holy Spirit very specifically healing many kinds of eczema, any kind of of, of, of uh, plagues on the skin right now. People are miraculously being healed, delivered from that in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I just thank you. I praise you for healing them. I send forth your word and heal them in the name of Jesus. Deliver them from all their destructions. Any strategy of the devil against those that are watching is destroyed in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you. We expect to hear a good report because we just prayed your word. And you watch over it to perform it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And if you have not received Jesus as a Savior, as your Savior, with your heart right now and say, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me all of my sins. I believe in you. I believe that you died for me on the cross. I believe that you resurrected from the dead. And now I ask you, come into my heart. Yes, be my Jesus. Lord, be my one and only Savior. If you prayed that prayer sincerely, Christ has come into your life. Talk yes, to him Lord. every day. Let him talk to you by reading his word and talk to others about him. And keep tuning into this program and share this program. Brother Albert, thank you so much. Thank you to all who have joined us. And remember, don't look at how big that problem Amen. or need might appear Put your eyes on the answer. Jesus Christ is the answer, and he is the same yesterday, today, and always. God yes. richly bless you. Amen.